Welcome to Monday Jazz and Conversation, presented by a collaboration of four nonprofit organizations Gold Coast Jazz Society, South Florida Jazz, Sunshine Jazz Organization, and the Miami Jazz Cooperative, all of whom are dedicated to bringing jazz to South Florida audiences. Each Monday, Wendy Peterson and Nick Yorta feature the music and talk to the country's most talented and interesting jazz musicians. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Fedchok to the uh, hang. Hi, Hi everybody. John. Great to be here. Um, the amazing and beautiful and the world's best person, Brenda <laughs> Alford. Ooh, <what? laughs> Brenda. Live up to that. Okay, <laughs> I got some living to do. <laughs> please welcome to Jazz and Conversation the amazing Joe Donato. Joey D. Hello. How are you? I'm so Good evening, sad ladies and gentlemen. This is stress. Ralph Edwards, and tonight, tonight, <laughs> it's Joe Donato. This is your life. And now, the hosts of Monday Jazz and Conversation, Wendy Peterson and Nick Yorda. Hey, everyone. Okay. Technical difficulties won tonight. I know. Today feels like a Wayne's <laughs> World kind of a night, Ooh. even though I think they had it down better down. Hey, okay. Oh, Technical your phone's on. Uh, or is my yeah. phone? Somebody's... We've... All the gremlins you know are what? coming out. I swear I haven't started drinking yet, but now I'm going to. I'm a, and I'm going to follow shortly. <laughs> anyway, we're very excited to um, <laughs> to be here tonight with an amazing guitarist we're, that we're featuring, the amazing John Hart. We have He is going to be... Oh, you're playing that. Okay. And I'm going to show this. He has a brand new CD out called Checkmate. And uh, we're going to... Um, talk to him about it in a little bit and but first we are going to hear him play with his amazing trio on bass you want to introduce oh sure we have carlo de rosa on bass who you are now familiar with uh, he was That's here right. not too long ago and then, sammy figaro yeah and then on drums we have gim gib mandish so um this is the john hart trio and uh take it away we'll keep your fingers crossed and uh, that everything goes well Thank you. 
Should I talk through this? Am I coming out? Thank you all for coming. Uh, that was a song of mine called off the new CD called uh, The Power of Three. Now we're going to continue with Cole Porter's Night and Day uh, arrangement that I wrote of this. We hope you enjoy it.
Thank you. 
I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> Shall we play another? One more. One more. <laughs> one more once. Uh, that was Everything Happens to Me, which is also my uh, new CD, which is a quartet with the great uh, Gary Simoleon, a uh, Barry player. And we actually did that as a duet kind of spontaneously in the studio. So it's <coughs> it's on the record. And we're going to uh, uh, continue now with a, a blues composition of mine, which is also on my new record. It's entitled One, Two, Three Blues. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. It's Carlo DeRosa on the bass. And uh, Gib Mandish on the drums. Hello. Hey there. Hello. How you doing? I'm exhausted. I don't know if I can talk now. <laughs> oh, you're going to talk. I haven't played a gig in like two years. <laughs> you're going to talk. Right, Wendy? Exactly. It feels like it anyway. Uh, well, you're sounding fantastic. Just, Thank you. Just amazing. All three of you guys are just killing it. It's so fun to be able to hear live music again. Yes. And uh, for sure, look, the, the band's taking a break behind me. <laughs> they, get to get a, they get to take a break. <laughs> yes, John does not. So uh, how you doing? I'm good. I know that you have a brand new CD. Right. Is, it, is it out now? Yeah, yeah. It's been out uh, for, uh, I think, about a month now. Makes the perfect everything gift, yes. whatever the next holiday is. It, it makes the uh, the perfect uh, vaccination. Yes, post vaccination. Post vaccination, yeah. getting back for the out for there. the yeah yeah for the uh, uh, not socially distanced listening party. That's right. No masks. <laughs> My mom just got hers today. Hope you're feeling all right, Madre. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, have you been gigging much throughout this? Or I know you've been teaching. Right, right. No, I didn't gig at all, but I feel like I'm really one of the lucky ones with my uh, teaching that. job at U of M because really kept me uh, busy from the, you know, we started back in the fall, right. kind of hit the ground running. So, uh, and uh, I keep very, uh, uh, I'm uh, very engaged musically when I'm there and stuff. So, so it's good. So really, I didn't, I haven't played any. I went up, I, I did go to New York once to record a, another record that's going to be coming out next year in December, but that's about the only thing I, I did till re recently now. Started playing a few gigs just in last month. So when did you record this CD? Uh, this one was done in December of 2019. Oh, okay. So wow. I'm recording on Steeplechase. Yeah, I'm kind of lining them up in, in queue. I have another one recorded. <laughs> it's coming out next year. So. That's the way to do it. So, well, it's yeah, yeah, it's nice. I mean, by by the time it comes out, I already kind of forgot. About it. <laughs> you know, it a it's older, a happy but, surprise. Oh yeah. wow, this sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or listen to on the radio. Who's that guy? Exactly. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. I love. Well, first of all, I love. I mean, your your originals are great, but oh, I really you. loved uh, the treatment of Night and Day. Oh, thank you. It was just you. really oh, and cool. Everything good. Yeah. And and one of my favorite songs of all time lyrically is Everything Happens, everything happens to, me. to Me. Matt Dennis. Yes, yeah, such yeah, a great yeah, yeah, tune. Beautiful tune, yeah. He's yeah. very underrated because, you know, he also has Angel Eyes, which is just Angel Eyes, fantastic. And I think uh, he wrote uh, Violets for Your Furs. Am I correct in that? No. And, and only the re only reason why uh, I know, I think that's Cole Porter. Violets for Your Furs? I think so. I'll have to check that. We'll have to. Yeah, yeah. We'll somebody out in the somebody audience, will check please it. check that. We'll Wikipedia. <laughs> I only say anybody that. Anybody out, anybody here know that? Jim, Violets for Your Furs. I know Matt Jim. Dennis. Oh, okay. It's not Cole oh, Porter. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought, you know what You know what it was? Jim came over with a with a Cole Porter book, and I thought, right. I thought I saw it in there. So, I'm wrong. It kills me to say it. <laughs> Cole Porter wrote every other song. Every other song. <laughs> you know, it's, I've been playing these songs for 40-something years, and it's just, you know, Cole Par Porter, uh, the <clears throat> more I play his music, he was probably maybe the greatest genius of all the uh, well, and just the fact great that American songbook. That he wrote writers. all the lyrics, too. It wasn't just... He wrote the lyrics, yeah. too, but just a variety of, of, of tunes, you know, from Night and Day to... Uh, the long Cole Porter tunes like I Concentrate on You to a tune like Everything I Love or, or uh, uh, Every Time We Say Goodbye yeah. oh, to uh, uh, I Get No Kick from Champagne, right. completely yeah. different. Uh, so in Love, another one of the long yeah. ones. You know, it's just endless. It's right. always, uh, uh, and he always has right. a little twist. Like there, like you know, every A section is always slightly different. Right, And right. it's so uh, interesting. He's, he's And he wrote... Uh, 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 I love you, which is you know it starts with the uh, major seventh uh, interval backwards. Uh, uh, doctoral students, he may be watching uh, Drew Amendola. He told me he re researched, researched, and I don't know if anybody knows this. 
It's very interesting. Cole Porter had a bet that he could write a song with the most obvious lyric ever, and he could write a great song. Wow. And that and was the picked, I Love You? He picked the most obvious <laughs> lyric, which is I Love You, and then he wrote it with that. Right. You know, it's like, who, you know, I, I don't know any other songs really that do anything like that. You know, yeah. The great American songbooks. And yeah, he's definitely a fun, a fun one. And, you know, we always like to find out a little bit about... Uh, your entire life from the moment you history. encountered a guitar, <laughs> your, your influences, and your career. Go. Right, right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm from Florida, so... Really? So that made it much easier coming back here to, to work at UM. You know. mm. I like Florida. Where in Florida? So believe, oh, it or not, were, I, believe it or not, I actually like Florida. Sarasota, right? <laughs> Sarasota, Florida. Yeah. You know. And okay. I, then I came to University of Miami... 1979 to 1983, well, studying, how, studying, of course, with Randall Dollahan, who's here tonight. Hey, Randall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, um, how old were you when you found the guitar? Uh, Twelve. Okay. And, why, and somebody just gave it to you? Kind of late. Sitting in your... Yeah, my parents uh, gave me a guitar. I don't, uh, I don't remember why. It was a, a little acoustic guitar that was black, and the strings were about uh, an inch off the... <laughs> Of course. Fretboard, so, so I learned a uh, few things on that. And, and, uh, was it your first instrument? Uh, pretty much, yeah. And you knew right I, away? I have, some, uh, I have a, a, a scrapbook with things that all the way back to elementary school uh, <clears throat> report cards. I have one, and it says, uh, I think I was in second grade, and the teacher wrote, shows absolutely no aptitude no. for music. Is that true? Public schools in Florida. <laughs> wow. I don't know why that. I don't know why I ended up with the guitar. Yeah, yeah. But I kind of took to it right away. And grew up in uh, Sarasota. Started playing in rock bands. Had an incredible band director in high school, which probably steered me towards being a musician, a great right. guitar teacher. And then, and then I came to U of M. So. Wow. And uh, do you? Who were your first influences? Uh, first influences growing up in the South, of course, Southern Rock and mm. uh, Allman Brothers, yeah. you know, which I listen to them now, and <clears throat> I see, wow, well, so I could see easily I could move to jazz from from there, and then you know, yeah, all the uh, guitars from the uh, uh, '60s, you know, the British, from Clapton, uh, nice. Jeff Beck, Jimi Hendrix, of course. John McLaughlin and Jeff Beck made those two records in the seventies, Blow by Blow and Wired, yeah. which are kind of moving towards fusion. So that's what. It's, wow, that's, so you know. was that your entrance to the jazz? Yeah, world? yeah, yeah. the fusion, po possibly. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, then I heard Miles, and uh, I think in eleventh grade, and I kind of, kind of had an epiphany <laughs> uh, hearing him playing. Uh, uh, ain't it ain't necessarily so. Oh, that's such a great record. And then, then I became very hardcore jazz person after that. Uh, Lee San wants to wanted us to ask you about Dave Gould. Yeah, yeah. Dave Gould was my uh, guitar teacher, who was. Uh, he was an uh, older style kind of big band guitarist, and, and Django Reinhardt. He worked uh, a lot professionally. He was actually a, a I think he was a, uh, a detective. I know he was a some kind of police officer. I think he was a de detective in the Washington D.C. area. Mm. He played uh, guitar and gigged all the time, and then he retired to Florida and he, he started a teaching studio that was very successful. Oh, cool. But he was he he went thoroughly you know I went thoroughly through you know learning how to read and all that kind of uh, stuff you know I went to the first lesson and I was like oh I don't know you know I was playing rock and right. this guy played he played Stairway to the Stars I think it's one of my favorite <laughs> you were tunes. and you were listening to Stairway to Heaven yeah yeah right, right exactly <laughs> one of my favorite favorite tunes now so yeah. it took me a minute to <laughs> but it, yeah I got a good. Um, uh, uh, you know, foundation definitely, yeah. definitely. You know, Lisa Ann was one of his students, and and she was in the uh, big. We were in the big band together mm. you know, with the band director Andy Wright, who was really a very special uh, person. You know, I've been talking to people about it. You know, it doesn't really the school doesn't really matter. It's all about the, uh, the individual. Teacher. Yeah. You know, you can be anywhere in the country. That's the truth. And if you have the, uh, you know, one teacher is going to just have a transformative effect on young people through yeah. decades and decades you know it doesn't matter where it is you know. and uh so uh 
and so then, that was good but not not too much not too much jazz but i got some gigs when i was in high school and my uh dave gould actually uh got me to sub uh, and i played with frankie lane i did a show in the suburb club with frankie lane and then i played uh, the uh, band director andy wright got me on all these gigs um with the orchestra where they had a little guitar part so i ended up working with uh, doing it, playing with phyllis diller and steve allen oh how fun and nice red skelton all these you know, interesting people who were who were uh, big stars then but i have some of my former students uh, maybe people that you guys don't know <laughs> but they were big stars Phyllis Diller, you know, I was stood backstage with, with Phyllis Diller as she was going to go, and I was in high school, and she, I, w I didn't go on until she went on, uh, the orchestra played a few tunes, and then I went on when she went on and plunked out a few chords, whatever they had to, in the guitar part, but I was standing by her, and she was absolutely nervous wreck, you know? Wow getting ready to go on stage, just wow. like kind of, kind of like this. And then she goes out and boom, she's Phyllis Diller immediately. <laughs> you know? And I'll never forget that. It's like, wow, you got to learn how to channel that nervousness, right. that nervous energy. And, I, and they say that, the, you know, that nervousness like kind of helps you, you know, you know, get get to that point. Yeah, of, maybe. maybe you know, you know, it was really, really, it was very interesting. I'll never forget that. Well, is that how you are on? That's how you, you, you did seem a little nervous before, uh, <laughs> before the show. Tonight. That was because of our technical issues. <laughs> I was a little nervous too. I was born nervous. So. Oh, my God. You seem pretty calm. <laughs> yes, you do seem calm. <laughs> How many, nervous calm. Right. How many uh, records have you recorded under your own name? Uh, around 13 or 14, I oh, think. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. So does composing come easily to you? Uh, yeah, it has, I think. I don't know. Uh, uh, I've kind of just been doing it uh, uh, when I... Uh, have a when I'm going to record or if I have a reason to do it. When I was younger in New York, of course, I just wrote music like everybody did because we wanted to write music and we wanted to hear our music and try to get it played, you know. And uh, I don't, I'm not a, a <clears throat> dedicated to composing right now, but I can kind of knock out some tunes pretty quick if I have a project coming up. Right. And arranging, composing, arranging too. I like to arrange tunes and I've done that a lot with standards and yeah and so how many would how many records would you say that you've recorded on that other than your own uh probably between 100 150 wow and, and do you like being a side man or do you like being the boss uh there's a uh you know there's there's uh advantages of both i mean i can once i'm actually doing it like now then i like to uh, be the boss but i don't like kind of the preparation right. involved and the booking and stuff. Oh God. Yeah. And, and the, and the, uh, showing up and I didn't have to worry about these guys cause I knew they're really responsible. Right. But you, you go to, a, a for your gig and it's like, is anybody going to be at the club? Is the right. club owner going to pay me? Right. Is the band going to show up? And, and it's almost more like, is anybody going to be there? It's like, who cares about the music? It just man. <laughs> right. Do you know, and, and that is so, it's so true that yeah. you say that because that is like, that's the only pressure I feel, you know, when, in, when I'm, the, when I'm headlining or it's under my name, like, are people going to come? Yeah. Y you know, if I'm just a side person and I'm like featured and it's like, okay, you know, let's, it, you know, it's just, I just go and have a great time. But that there is that stress of like, oh, is there, there going to be people? there you yeah, know yeah. it's terrifying so working on a side man especially if it's interesting uh, uh band mm. and interesting musicians you know that's that's great because yeah you just have to kind of be responsible for bringing you know what you are able to bring to the band right and, and uh, uh less less of that but i've seen some incredible bands play for nobody you know I remember, right. Dex, I remember Dexter Gordon came to Sarasota, and I think I was in college, and I sat right on the front row, and I think there were about ten people there. Yeah, and, well, he, came, and right. he came out, and he just played like he was, uh, you know, like right. Was, Popularity you know, and quality don't go hand in hand. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, he was well known too. But every, you know, every gig's not going to be right. Sure, every gig's not going to yeah. be sold out. So. Have you ever been put in a position where you've gotten hired to play on a on a gig that really wasn't your wheelhouse? That they expected you to kind of be somebody else or 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 play like somebody else. Oh right? yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. How yeah, fun yeah. is that? <laughs> uh, I mean, you try to do your best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm. I didn't. I didn't set out. I'm. I'm very comfortable playing a lot of different kinds of music. Yeah. Which right. I didn't really set out to doing it. Do 
that necessarily. I think I was just interested in a lot, you know. And you get pigeonholed in New York, especially when I was first in New York, I was playing bebop. And, but right. I'd already, you know, I learned how to play playing rock and roll. So right. I, you right. know, and then somebody sure. would hear me play, play uh, fusion or something. They'd be like, well, how, how can you do exactly. that? And it's like, what do you mean? It's, it's what I do. I, I played in the 80s. I played in the house band in the Apollo Theater. I was in the oh, wow. house band cool. playing, playing R&B at the uh, famous uh, amateur night yeah Apollo Theater mm -hmm. on Wednesday night you know where Ella Fitzgerald first played oh that's and, fantastic and, and stuff so I did a, a variety of different things and then in the I mean a jazz musician and playing jazz guitar you know the umbrella is wide so, yes so if you're open-minded and you're you've learned to play different you know learn uh number of different languages you can kind of fit in with a lot of a lot of different musicians yeah. which i have through my career and you know i've worked with everybody from the organ to, you know jack mcduff and, right. and uh, jimmy smith and lou donaldson people like that to playing with maria snyder's band for right. 20 years or i'm playing with brian blade now and yeah. you know a lot of a lot of different different things and so. i have i have definitely noticed that about your playing i've seen you in a, a number of situations yeah. and you seem equally uh, comfortable, you know, playing the blues, you know, as you do playing the moody, ethereal, right. you know, kind of, and 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 also accompanying. You're such a great accompanist for singers. Which yeah, is, and I've done, did that a, a lot in New York, also. Yeah, and a lot of uh, albums too. I've played, recorded with a lot of vocalists too. So. Yeah, and you're you're great at it. Really, really, really oh, tasty. Thank you. thank you. Well, I have uh, two uh, final, I can maybe finalish questions. Uh, now that things seem to be going in the right direction as far as the pandemic goes, what do you have on the horizon? And secondly, musically, what do you feel that you want to do that you haven't done yet? Uh, those are uh, good questions. Uh, I, I don't think really have that much on the horizon. We're, <laughs> I'm going to go up to uh, uh, up north in the summer, and my wife hasn't seen her mother in over a year. And oh, I'm wow. thinking, oh, I got a new CD. I should try to book a yeah, yeah well, I'm in New York, so maybe I'll do that. Uh, uh, this uh, teaching job uh, that I'm doing, uh, which uh, I never really expected to, to uh, end up here doing it, but it's been really amazing experiences. And I, I, I almost have built in, uh, you know, when I practice now, it's like I don't really need a gig because I have this whole, you know, I have all these uh, – students and other musicians to share what I'm working right, on. Right, right. You know, I already have like a building venue for for that, you know, so it's, it's. Uh, so I would say in terms of that, yeah, I'm just continuing, you know, I love to play. I would get up every day and try to play guitar and work on new stuff and, and uh, nothing real specific, you know, I may, you know, end up, maybe I may do a, a record that's themed in a different way in some point, right. you know, and stuff, but right now, nothing, nothing really specific. Well, you've got a record coming out next year, we know that. Right, right, which is with a, <laughs> with a piano quartet, so oh, that's, that's cool. different, you know, this one's with a saxophone, with a great Gary Simoleon, and a, uh, you know, uh, kind of Hold a unique up, pairing, a unique pairing of jazz guitar and baritone saxophone. You know, yeah, that's that is you don't interesting. Hear as often. There's a it couple is. great records. Checkmate, checkmate. And yeah. so we would find that where people can find uh, that. Uh, yeah, anywhere you would find records now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Certainly Amazon and all the you know Very all the on time, online retailers mostly. Maybe a, there's a record store somewhere. If, you know, I mean it's distributed, but I, I don't even know what retails like. Most of retails online now. So right. Well, it's uh, I can't wait to hear more. So you're going to play for us some more. Yes. Yes. Let us uh, do a couple of announcements first, and then uh, you, the the boys can get ready. Okay. All right, breaks <laughs> over, guys. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> and uh, we'll get back to you in a couple minutes. Yeah, because okay. I because I do want to talk about the online the virtual tip jar. So uh, if Nikki, if you want to pull that uh, uh, the banner up, no, the yeah. Um, so we have a tip jar online. It is a um, you. We always want to pay our musicians as much as as we can, you know, fairly and whatnot. So uh, we ask that you support our musicians. The first one hundred dollars will be matched, which is very exciting. And all you have to do is text the word tip jar to the number four four three two one. So um, some people have gotten confused by this. The number that you're texting to is 44321 and the message that you're sending is tip jar. You will immediately get a, uh, a message back that is a very secure, safe link to, um, to be able to put however much. It's, there's no like limit or, or, or you know, 
you know, low or high, um, anything you can, you know, we know it, it's a difficult time. So if you can, we would so appreciate you supporting our musicians. Um, all of the money that goes in the tip jar plus the hundred dollar match goes directly to the musicians at the end of the night. We don't keep anything or, you know, you know, have fees or anything. Right. Everything goes directly to the musicians. So, um, we thank you in advance. That's once again, it's text the word tip jar to the number four, four, three, two, one. Um, thank you. And, uh, I guess we're going to hear some more music from John Hart. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
We're going to play one of my favorite Thelonious Monk tunes, Ask Me Now. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thelonious Monk asked me now. Once again, you've been listening to Carlo DeRosa on the bass. Gib Manish on the drums. Yours truly, John Hart, playing the guitar. Thank you all for coming out to this in intimate uh, gathering. And uh, we're going to close out now with a, a, a title tune from the new CD. This is called Checkmate.
Carla DeRosa, get man is John Hart. Thank you very much, and good night. John Hart, everybody. John Hart. Woo! Fantastic. Uh, I will, one more time, uh, checkmate John Hart, brand new CD on Steeplechase. Um, very great. Uh, thank you so much for uh, playing for us. That was just amazing. And um, want to let you know, uh, well, first of all, we want to thank uh, everybody for watching and for showing up. Uh, and uh, we want to thank our partners in crime with, uh, that, that help make this happen every, each and every week. Um, and that is sunshinejazz.org, sun, the Sunshine Jazz um, organization. Uh, and we want to let you know that uh, they are, they are um, having every sun every every sunday they have a jazz brunch so go check out their website sunshine I think, jazz uh, we might be able to to play that okay all right well, let's see. sunshine jazz organization is proud to be presenting world-renowned steel pan maestro othello molino Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> we, get it. we are having some issues tonight. Uh, so, uh, definitely so definitely go check out the website, website because it's a fantastic jazz, jazz brunch, brunch on Sunday, Sunday with Othello Molino, and, and uh, you can find out all the information on sunshinejazz.org. Um, also want to thank Gold Coast Jazz Society at goldcoastjazz.org, and I know coming up soon is their Sunday afternoon um, jazz jam, student jazz jam, and you definitely want to check that out up in Fort Lauderdale, and 
you can find out all the information for that on the goldcoastjazz.org website. We want to thank South Florida Jazz, um, who's another, which is another great jazz society that put on a fantastic virtual uh, concert series uh, this season, and I'm sure has some really great things coming up for us um, this next upcoming season. So you definitely want to check them out at southfloridajazz.org, and of course Miami Jazz Cooperative at miamijazz.org, and. Um, Hopefully we got lots of great things coming up. Hopefully we'll be start we're starting our Thursday afternoon um, Jazz at Jackson series yes. as, as well as a whole bunch of other things coming up. Stay tuned to find out what's happening. Want to let you know what's coming up. We uh, we don't have flyers because today has just been one of those days. Yes. But uh, we know that next Monday night we are going to have a live another live performance. It's it's, it's kind of. At the jazz board, but it's actually inside using the inner jazz. It's the inner jazz. Oh, the inner jazz board. Uh, it's it's um it's we're going to be using our piano, which we're really excited about, and it's going to feature the the amazing Dana Paul. And we haven't had a singer in a while, so I'm really looking for it, and I just love Dana Paul. So uh, uh, and he'll be accompanied by Chuck Bergeron on bass, and of course my favorite Jim Gazier on the piano. So um, you definitely want to check out that. And uh, then the following week is Z, Ooh, the big, is the a big, big celebration, a big birthday bash for the Miami Jazz Cooperative because it is our 11th year in operation. Uh -huh. And so we will be, um, we have asked a whole bunch of people. Uh, we're not sure exactly. It's either going to be 11 for the 11th. It might end up being a little bit more because we're extra. We're givers. We're, we're givers. <laughs> Um, but um, we're going to have 11 sets, short sets from um, from 11 different artists, and we're really looking forward to uh, to uh, presenting that. So definitely check out what's coming up, and uh, we'll see you again next week. So thanks so much for watching. Be safe and have fun. Good night, everyone. Good night.